the last time we were all together, uh, we spoke briefly about Aaron Rodgers, very briefly. Oh boy. And last oh time boy. Craig and I were together, Craig took the stance that maybe we were reading too far into the things that were leaking, the things that maybe we were just inferring that Aaron Rodgers wasn't happy. Maybe we were just inferring that Green Bay was, they were trying to be like, will you take 40 mil? As it turns out, there have been three separate trips made to visit Aaron Rodgers. Mike Tirico spoke with Aaron today. We are recording on Saturday. The draft just ended a couple hours ago. Um, Spoke with Aaron today. He requested politely not to speak to the media. He was just kind of decompressing. He was with his fiance and friends enjoying the Kentucky Derby. But he is upset that this has gotten out. He has told friends in the locker room and, and sources say he is unhappy and he is willing or thinking about retiring. I want to come to you first, Craig, because you were the one that was like, Maybe this isn't as big a deal as we think it is. No, I know. What do you? What are your thoughts and feelings now? I've, I've, I'm, I'm a turncoat. I have, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 180 backwards the other way. Partly because I, I watched him talk about how joyful his Jeopardy experience was. I talk, I watched him talk since our last. He's done so chat. well too. Yeah, it looks so and, good. And, there's good feedback coming out. Shailene Woodley's obviously a, a big influence on him, not given a whatever about football right now. And it's, I mean, lucky for me, I'm not a Packer fan or I like Rogers. I like watching. No, him. of course. But I would equally be able to get my jollies by watching him on a television program or like what Peyton Manning's doing. I love that. You know, I'm, I'm like shocked, but not, you know what I'm saying? Like right. it makes sense because he just had an MVP season, and what it looks like happened is without telling him, they were kind of shopping him. And that, something like that is what went down, where, where there wasn't great communication, and they were like hearing offers after he just dropped a dime piece of a season. Now, I, I mean what I wish we could get, and I'd have to get approval. My business partner is a huge Rodgers fan, a huge Packers fan. If I was just outside there, that door, when I told him, I wish I could probably get him to recreate the face. But when I turned and said, <laughs> did you hear about Aaron? He said, no, what? And I told him what was going on. I can't even contort my face in the way he was wearing all his Packers regalia because it was Thursday. He was wearing mm. everything. He had his hat. He had everything. He had a piece of cheese in his teeth. It was done. And then I told him that. And it was like the the. The, the motions before he would begin weeping. He never went full cry, but I, I don't think Aaron um, is going to play there for much Mike, longer. What, or what are all. you on the outside looking in? Obviously, you are, your, your team is in the NFC, so you, we, we see Aaron Rodgers from time to time. What are your thoughts from the outside looking in at the Green Bay Packers organization right now? I mean, if I was a member of the Green Bay Packers organization, I would have just going into the draft, all this information leaking, him being unhappy, not wanting to be there anymore. And now that he's saying with all this information coming out and him not getting out, the fact that he's now contemplating retirement as an organization, as a GM, you got to be looking at that and being like, fuck, should we have <laughs> traded him and gotten something <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> rather than ra should we've gotten something rather than just letting him retire and then having him pay back some of his signing bonus to us which i think is about 23 million over two years that he would have to pay back if he retires it you know are we gonna have to like that money doesn't do fucking shit for us that doesn't add to the cap there's no mechanisms to where we get that money back aside from the fact that well this goes back to the owner i guess like that's it so do you look at that like as an organization, if he does go this route, does decide to go ahead and just say, all right, I'm calling it a career, have a nice life. Like, you know, do you look at the situation with regret? Like, cause now you're you have to. starting you, that GM has to, his name's Brian. That's all I know. That's what Google Brian. told me. Yeah. yeah I don't even want to, I didn't want to bitch. Something like that. I can't pronounce it. I can't it's pronounce it. Apparently he, and I did know this, but he said we're optimistic. He had to use that word. He had to use the word optimistic. So that he's lying. Our, our quarterback will come back. He has to say that. He can't say, of course, Aaron's coming back. He has to say we're optimistic that Aaron will come back because it, they, the front office screwed this so badly. 
worse yeah. than some of the other conversations we had, the three of us, on organizations that dealt with quarterbacks poorly. But Bad we business. did mention that they've done this before. They farved it up. And it looks like they're going to do a version of it again, except this guy might not jump a bunch of teams. He might not do that. If he still has the itch to play and to win, he would. He might just be interested in doing next level shit with his life. I can yeah. see that. And I wouldn't blame him for it. So, I mean, oh, go ahead. My, I, I, this kind of feeds into what Craig is saying. If Aaron Rodgers calls it a career, he's widely been, anticipated as being one of the best if not the best quarterback in the league for many years now yeah does he make it onto your quarterback mount rushmore oh wait a minute you only get four only four that's not even a top five it's four does he make it with four no no okay so sorry i love i like him but come on one super bowl one super bowl is bad even if he doesn't even if he doesn't get any help, which he does not. One Super Bowl hurts him. Two, he's probably on. He's probably his face is on there. He, it is. It's that's even tough. You got guys, man. You got the Montanas and the Brady and the Aikman. You, you got to go places. You got to. The Rushmore's tough. That's yeah, hard. Like, I mean, that's an I episode. Give, yeah, I was gonna say because I was gonna say I could give you uh, what I think my Rushmore probably looks like. I need it now. I now I kind of need more no, time. I need, I need okay, your first fine. one, the, the dry <laughs> one. The, the dry we're not warmed one. up yet. We're not warmed up yet. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts while it's going in, but I want there, it. There is no Astro Glide on this Mount Rushmore. Uh, sponsored by Astro Glide. Uh, <laughs> Get the load. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, I mean, my Mount Rushmore would probably have to be without research and just this being something we didn't discuss we were talking we about. We did. Um, we did not. Uh, we did yeah, not. I'm looking at the outline right now. It's not there. It's um, not there. My, my Mount Rushmore, I would go ahead and give it Joe Montana, Dan Marino, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Dan Marino affected Craig in a very positive way, but also a negative way. It was the same. It was like, I'm so glad you said it, but I'm, I don't agree. So it's like, <laughs> damn it. I was like, damn it. I, uh, that's the thing is, you look at Dan Marino, it's, it's like the Super Bowl statistic is the big thing that kind of sticks out compared yeah. to the others. That's true. Um, Cause he kind of is in a similar boat to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you could, you could make, you can, I mean, if you want to, because of, you know, length, longevity of career and numbers, you can make a fucking argument for Drew Brees should be in there. It's true. You know, I was literally looking at his that. numbers, his it's, numbers but you, are top tier. But what, you know, what about some of the dudes? I know, obviously no respect for Aikman as giant fans. Fine. I'll, I'll jump oh, in no. and go, oh, but what about your, your, what about like the, the, this is bad too because it's Dallas Stawback, or if we go Bart Starr, there's some. I feel like this but is tough. like Rushmore when you win tough. a when you win a Super Bowl when there is seven teams that that I know like well, the Montreal Canadiens. That, but, yeah. And if I'm yeah. flipping, just because you normally go to basketball, I'm going to go to hockey. The Please Canadians do. have the most championships of any major sports franchise in ever in forever. They have 25 Stanley Cups but they were part of the original six. So you had a, a just under 20% chance to yeah. win the, the cup every year. I immediately don't respect that. Correct. Yeah, no, you're going to gonna start doing some Scott Steiner math in a second. But like, wait a minute. I thought the Yankees had a lot of a lot of titles. I'm looking that up. Oh, they might have 26. They might have passed with the last. I think they did. I think they did. Either way, I think it's actually you're not still, wrong. But the Yankees were you're also one of those first teams. They were one of the first teams in baseball when there was four guys. Not everybody had a catcher's mitt, and they were like, "This oven mitt's fine, right?" Like, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, one, of those how dare you, sir? You have no respect for history. How dare you? Stick ball doesn't count in, when you're when you're talking about. <laughs> These records, man, but they those don't. Dudes were yeah. all, all the guys in the fifties were coked out of their minds. Out of their yeah, mind, no, you're out of their gourd. you're playing, and some of the people you're playing with are like Wiffle Ball Tony. Like, who cares about <laughs> Wiffle Ball Tony? Dude, Joe DiMaggio was doing blow off of hookers in the locker room. Yes, he was, yes, and he, was. he still true. was was averaging three hits a game. That's right. Babe Ruth was chugging beers and drinking hot dogs. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> Babe Ruth was sitting in the dugout. He's like, I fucking love hot dogs. Here's what happened there. <laughs> Good I night, know yeah. I'm not even sure if you meant to say drinking hot dogs, but that's what I heard. And my visual on my in my brain was 
straight Homer Simpson just drinking, like <laughs> just chugging <laughs> beer, guzzling hot, hot dogs. Hot dogs are in the, the next cup, and it's all going down. Then Babe waddles out there, cranks a Homer. Bear, you know, he even says to the umpire, goes like this, I'm not doing the bases. <laughs> He just goes back to the dugout. I got a belly full of hot dogs. I'm not doing it. Almost had the damn coronary round in third. (laughs) You see me drink those hot dogs? I'm not running. (laughs) Yeah, the hot dog water adds to the flavor. (laughs) Okay. I did not mean to say that. (laughs) To bring this back. It was better. It was better. Sorry. To bring this back to football. Oh, my God. It was outstanding. I can't wait to just clip that and, like, just put that out in the world. Um, where do the Green Bay Packers go from here? Is Jordan Love ready no. to take over the mantle of starting quarterback of a historic franchise? Is, yeah. is it is it Jordan Love time? Is it Jordan Love o'clock? Craig, hit me with it. Yeah, I mean, I, ho- I hope for himself as a person. I don't know dick about him. I know he came in and ruffled this all up to begin with. He didn't mean for that. That wasn't his choice. Um, As anyone who goes to an NFL team, I'm going to say I hope he is doing some preparatory type shit. I don't know if Rodgers is the type of take under your wing guy. That did not happen for him. So I don't know if he's doing it for love. But if love's just a, a, a human that got drafted, he was a first rounder. You know what I mean? There's money in his bank account. If he's just taking it seriously as like this is my actual job. I'm not going to say they're going to be where they were. They won't represent the NFC, you know, none of that. But I think he can he can be serviceable if he isn't, uh, you know, hot trash, which they didn't think he was. Obviously, they've he traded a few into the first. Correct. Round to get they've, him. they've picked a few good quarterbacks in a row in terms of like what? Ninety one was Favre. That lasted a long time. Oh, three was Rogers. Oh, five. Oh, three. I think it was oh, three. Whichever one, and then he didn't play for a while. So they've drafted like two quarterbacks in the last like really long time, math it up on that one. So what if they actually got it right? They screwed up the transition because they didn't like openly announce, Aaron, we're taking a guy that we expect to sit behind you for four years. Would you teach him things? But I I think he's going to be fine. I just don't think the team is going to stay at the level they were at. Mike, what do you think? I mean, they're, they're, uh, I, if they don't have Aaron Rodgers, they have defensive liabilities. I, I don't know that they're a playoff team, you know, because uh, I don't Probably know not. if he can help get, I don't know if he can help get the points on the board because Aaron Jones can only do so much as a running back, you know, like obviously he'd agreed to stay. So you do have that feather in your cap. He he's has upset been one right of the now. Best, yeah. He's, he's been one of the best running backs in the league for the past couple he's of upset. years. But, you know, aside from what is it, aside from Devonte Adams, Correct. What, what weapons do they have? Devante, but Devante is also in the final year of his contract right now. Yeah. Right now, he is. This him is, and Aaron, him and Aaron have like a mental mind meld. He is going to be very displeased if Aaron leaves. If Aaron goes somewhere else, he may even be interested in finding his way there soon. But either way, I think that, that they lose Rodgers and Adams in the next two years. Sorry, I have a bug in here. <laughs> so two final questions to wrap up our Aaron Rodgers hot dog drinking saga. Um, who who holds the cards right now? Does Aaron hold the cards or does Green Bay hold the cards? Craig? Aaron, a- Aaron Rodgers holds all the cards. He's rich. He doesn't need that 23 mil. He could straight say kick rocks or he could force a trade if he says, I'm going to keep playing football, but not for you. He holds, I I believe, the player. This goes back to that player empowerment thing from episodes ago. Right. I think he holds all of them. I do. I the only card the the they have is hey, give us our money back. But he has more of it. And his his fiance makes quarterback money per movie, so they don't. Yeah, I mean the my point on it is the NFL is not the NBA yet in regards to player power. That's true. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) But. He's dying. He's it, dying. He's, it, he's holding it, back he just, a cough. It's the cough hot it dog. Out. It's the hot dog. <laughs> it's the hot dog water. Uh, no, but this could be the, the, the seismic shift that a high profile player of this caliber happened. demanding a trade to get out something like this that can cause the player power to take the lead in the NFL. If he says he's, he's high profile enough to do it, he's high yeah, profile exactly. enough. The, all the running backs that tried to hold out over the years, that wasn't a quarterback. That wasn't well, that's a the thing is, white quarterback. As, oh, well, that's that's another thing. But I mean, that, that's yes. that's not a topic. Just, I don't know if we can get to. But, oh, no, no, I'm not also, trying to yes. take. I'm not. I'm not making a racial thing. I'm just saying this is a 
this is the one of the beacons of the NFL. If he, to, you're, you're making a very good point is what I'm getting at. If he is yeah. the one that does it, it breaks it open like when LeBron started just saying, I'll go wherever the hell I want. Well, and he wasn't even first, mind you. It was Garnett, Allen, and, and Pierce that kind of got together and really right. kicked it off. But yeah. if Aaron Rodgers, because the Brady thing didn't come across as like bad blood and move. It was like mutual parting ways. Everybody's and happy. And then we found out afterwards there was some some bad blood. Right. But they were able to keep that kind of not a part of the conversation. Right. Kraft is saying congratulations, whatever. This one's going different. And I, Mike's making yeah. a strong point there. Yeah. It could change the, the you know, the, the, the dichotomy i guess would be the right term of the nfl that players can have the power and if the player says fuck you i don't want to play here anymore there's going to be weight behind that yeah so a final question final question i want to start with you mike where in your in your perfect world and it's it's an objective and and actual foreseeable place where would you like to see aaron Rodgers go uh that's tough because the answer was better pre-draft Pre-draft, the answer is 110% San Francisco. Like, San Francisco is where he should be. He would be great in that offense. He would do great under Shanahan. He does have some all right weapons there. He's got a reliable tight end in Kittle who will catch anything that you do. You you, you toss his way and then stone cold stunner his way into the fucking end zone. Um, and, and you have some young receivers who do have talent, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk. That would be the ideal landing spot, but they didn't bite pre-draft. They drafted Trey Lance. Obviously, that's something we'll get to later talking about some draft talk, but the Jimmy G, Trey Lance dichotomy that like the relationship there, what, you know, they, I don't think you can add Aaron Rodgers to that when you just got a quarterback at number three and you're still paying Jimmy G out the wazoo. Because that's supposedly what the trade was, was like at least two first rounders and Jimmy G to the pack. There's a chance they could, still, they could still get something done with all future and Jimmy G, but yeah. it's going to be tougher. It would be tougher, but San Fran was the fit. He also is a California boy boy and likes it yes. there and that is closer to where his wife works at oh, soon to be wife if you will yeah uh, does her work things so that that opens up la uh you know the chart well charges have herbert it's herbert. there's no good fits there there's no good fits mm -hmm. yeah it was san I mean, francisco you, you could debate the rams because stafford you know what's he got left but then but also, you can also like, do the same thing what are you with gonna Rogers. What, I mean, right. if you if you have to pick between Stafford and Rodgers, it's not a difficult decision. It's I read no, something that, that Rodgers was okay with. The, he was favorite was the Niners, but he was also okay with the Broncos and and one other might have been the Bears um, that he was actually okay with for whatever his reasons were. But obviously, I would love to see him in Miami. It's just not going to happen. There's not no no way not in not in any of the crystal balls out there. But no, Mike Mike nailed it. It was a the fit was 49ers should be 49ers. I think there's pictures of him as a kid in like 49ers gear. He like yeah, likes I think the 49ers. He was a fan of the 49ers. Yeah, well, I mean, like, he also went to Cal. Like Cal is yeah, in, yeah. right around San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. I'm, I don't know. I don't know where their colleges are located there. But I'm bad I at geography. This is not what we're, <laughs> we're not geography guys.